Hey everybody, welcome back to my shop. And this week, we're going to turn this little clock. Now I've had these clock kits sitting on my shelf for a few months now, so it's about time I get one done. But please remember, this is not an instructional video and is meant for entertainment purposes only. Your safety is your responsibility. Let's get started. So we're starting out with this slab of American Elm. I milled it last year with my chainsaw and sealed up the ends with paint to prevent any cracking. But this is a very large piece and I'm not looking to make a big bulky clock. So I'm actually going to cut a little strip out on the bandsaw and we'll come back once we're between centers. I'm trying to make both cuts straight and parallel so the clock can be stood up on its own if preferable. Here I'm just using my thumb as a guide trying to get the blank mounted with the face running true as possible. Okay, we're now mounted between centers. Now this is going to be the front face of the clock, but what we're going to do first is flatten it right off and put a 10 in here so we can grab it in the chuck and create a recess to hold the clock mechanism. Now it's not very well balanced, so we're going to have to start out slow at about 400 RPM. I'm going to speed you guys up to save a little bit of time. I'm taking very light cuts around the bark areas to try to keep it intact. Okay, let's flip her around. Let's flatten off the bottom. So right now I've stopped the lathe because I have to figure out the overall dimensions of this clock body before I go too far. So here's the actual clock mechanism. On the very outside tip here is where all the hands get mounted to. And this brass threaded section here is how it actually gets mounted to the body of the clock. Now on this threaded mechanism, this threaded section here, it also takes the flange to mount it to the wall a little washer and a nut and that takes up about an eighth of an inch of the threads but these threads overall are only about five sixteenths so if we take off that eighth inch we only have about three sixteenths left so I have to leave the wood in which this threaded part will go through only three sixteenths of an inch now I'm going to dish out the front to where all the clock face sits and so I have that kind of marked out here then here's that three sixteenths for that threaded rod to fit through and then here's the width of the body itself now the flange that mounts it to the wall only comes out to the outside of this body so I can't have it any thicker than this either so the goal now is to reduce the thickness until we hit this line we're just about there so let's give her one last nice clean cut and it'll be all done There, that's looking good. Let's just clean out the center and we can start forming the recess. We need to make a 3 inch recess in the back. Now I don't have a 3 inch Forstner bit, so I'm just going to grab the largest one I have, which is 2 and an eighth, and this will help me to clear out most of the wood so I can finish it off with regular turning tools. It'll also act as a depth stop. So let's start the lathe up at about 400 RPM and drill this hole out.
here we go. We also need a hole drilled for the shaft of the mechanism. So I've got a 5 16 inch bit, just a regular drill bit chucked up in the lathe, and we can drill this straight through to the other side. There we go. I think I need to drill a bigger hole here. There we go. Before moving to the next step, I'm just going to sand the backside off camera while it's still being held firmly in the chuck by that tenon on the front. One more important point I want to mention before I move on is I've dished out this inner recess just slightly and left an outer ring that's slightly raised. This way all four corners will seat flat inside the recess and it'll guarantee that the hands will move parallel to the face. So the back side's all sanded. Now I'm just expanding the jaws into the recess so we can hold it while we work on the face of the clock. Now I'm going to use the index feature of the lathe to mark out all the hours of the day. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the very bottom side, the side I want as the bottom, just in case I want it to be able to sit on a shelf, and I'm just taking my speed square, lining it up with that, and lining it up with the bed waist till it's nice and flat. There we go. And now I'm actually going to expand the jaws into the piece There, everything's square. I'm going to expand the jaws into the piece. Crap. Easier said than done, but there we go. Now I know when I index all the numbers for the hours of the day, I will have them exactly up and down plumb with this bottom edge. What I'm going to do is take one last good clean cut to get the surface easy to sand and then I'm going to sand all these outside corners first before I create the details inside. Now we're ready to start working on the clock face. I'm just going to put a very light bead here, nothing too aggressive because I don't want to interrupt the grain pattern and it's going to help me get down to a lower depth here to set that proper thickness for that spindle to fit through. So I'm going to have to be very careful as I work around here that I don't go too far. So we're going to fire the lathe back up. And let's go to work. While I'm forming this shallow bead, it's important to note that this is a cross grain piece. So as long as I'm cutting directly into the slab, I'll be cutting downhill with supporting fibers. I don't want to get any torn grain on the bead because it'll be very difficult to sand it away and have the details left nice, smooth and crisp. To make this bead, I'm just using my half inch bowl gouge with a 40-40 grind on it. It's a very agile grind and I can get into tight spots very easily. 
Okay, I think that'll denote the clock face pretty well. All I gotta do now is sand up these details and then I can move on to indexing where I want the numbers. So now sanding is completely done on the piece. I'm now gonna use the indexing feature of my lathe to mark out the 12 different hours on the clock. So I've got the tool rest set to dead center for this pencil. And so that's how I'm gonna make sure that all these lines come out accurately. So I'll speed that up for that process. Now I'm going to mark two concentric circles around the face to give me a, a size to aim for, for the numbers. There we go. I decided while I have it properly indexed on the lathe that I'd mark out a few more little reference points for myself. So off camera I went ahead and sketched up some Roman numerals on the clock face. And uh, I didn't even bother recording it because my sketching and drawing abilities are so poor. You would have just seen me make a mark and then erase a mark and then make a mark. And... But anyways, we're ready to start burning now. So I've got my razor tip system out. And so I'm just going to take my time and slowly burn it and try not to burn things I'm not supposed to. And so I'm going to throw you to high speed and see how this turns out. At one point while working on this part of the process, I thought to myself, geez, this is a pretty piece of wood before I got a hold of it. But in all honesty, it turned out pretty good in the end. But I think next time, I'll print off some stencils and it'll save me some time. So I'm going to go ahead and sand away all the pencil lines, and then I'll see what the pyrography looks like, and I'll probably have to go over it one more time just to touch it up. So obviously this needs a little bit more work, but let's get her done so we can throw some finish on it. So I'm all done with the pyrography, or at least the more I work at it, the more the pen wants to get away with me. So let's move on to finishing. So for the finish I'm going to use is just this wood turner's finish. It's a water-based poly. It was given to me by my Uncle Bill from Alberta. Thanks Uncle Bill. So we're going to apply this in several coats. The first coat I'm going to apply with a brush. And I'll start with the bark and I'm going to soak the bark very liberally. And this will help to stabilize it. I'm not going to be shy. Let it soak right in there. Whoop. Now that I got the bark thoroughly soaked, I'm going to start applying it to the open wood. I'm going to apply it on liberally and I'm going to wipe off the excess. Now, this is a water-based poly, so I could tell it actually went really good and deep into the wood, so it's going to do a really good job protecting it. And it has uh, raised the grain up, so in between each coat, I'm just going to scuff with either 600 grit sandpaper or 4 aught steel wool, whatever seems to work more efficiently. And uh, after I have a few coats on, we'll come back and we'll see what the finish looks like. So I've got three coats of that water-based poly on, and it's now finally sealed up the wood really good, and it's just starting to build up on the surface. So next I'm just going to scuff the surface down with some 4 aught steel wool, and then I'm going to buff on some beeswax thinned with mineral spirits. Please protect your eyes and lungs when working with steel wool. To apply the wax, I just rub a generous amount over the entire surface, then I let it sit for a minute, then I buff it vigorously to create some heat which will drive out the mineral spirits, and this will leave the surface with a nice matte sheen. Now all that's left is for us to assemble the clock. I've got all the parts laid out in order, so let's get to it. Well, I lucked out. I don't think I could have got any closer than that. There, our clock is all assembled. It's working really well. It's a continuous sweep movement, so it doesn't go tick, tick, tick. It's a very quiet clock, and it's ready to be mounted up on a wall or to be placed on a shelf or something. How's the finish look? Thanks for tuning in to this week's video. Some photos of the finished product will be coming up at the end like usual. And if you like the video, please click the like button and share it around. 
And if you have any questions or suggestions for me, please fire those off in the comment section down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. I'll have a new video out every Friday. So thank you very much and have yourself a great day.